Welcome back to the IU427 Garage, everybody. Today we're working on the King's Cobra, and what we're working on in particular is the upper radiator hose. Um, we're going to try to change out the existing Factory 5 provided hose system <laughs> with something that's a little bit better looking and something that has far fewer points of failure. So I'm all for making things look nice, but uh, my main priority when I'm building a car for a customer is to make the car as reliable as I possibly can and to eliminate any points of failure that I see um, while we're building the car. One of those points of failure on this one that I see that glares right at me is this corrugated upper radiator hose that Factory 5 has been supplying now with the Mark IV kits for quite a while. Now, this owner has replaced the bottom hose with a unit from Breeze Automotive. So basically it's a piece of stainless tubing with a couple of rubber hose ends that connect to the radiator up here and then down below here connect to the water pump, right? Now, I don't have any problem with any of these products made by Breeze or um, uh, Bob Boyg at Boyg's Cool Tube. But since Bob's passing, um, the products from Boyg's are somewhat up in the air. Now, I haven't seen anybody recently be able to buy anything from uh, Boyg. Now, I don't know if there's family squabbling going on and, and at some point, someone will actually step back in and start producing the parts that, uh, that, that Bob was producing. But at this point, they're, they're just not available, as far as I know. So we're gonna do what we've done in the past and we're gonna basically make an upper radiator hose out of existing part numbers from the Gates radiator hose catalog. Now, how I do this is I go on to the O'Reilly's Auto Parts website I type in radiator hose, and then I start narrowing down my search. Now, I started my narrowing with inch and a half inlet and outlet. And then it can, it'll allow you to also do the total length of the hose, but I haven't found that very reliable. So I started with an inch and a half on both sides because our inch and a half outlet from the engine out of the thermostat housing is an inch and a half. Our inlet into the radiator is an inch and a half. And so I just started scrolling through about 400 pictures of radiator hoses and um, I came up with a couple of examples here and I've, I've got them here um, on the runway for the lift. Now you can see each of these over on this side are one piece hoses that I thought I could get the most out of. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for an offset. Something like this that changes the height from over here to over here because as you look our radiator hose at the radiator starts low and it ends up high where the filler cap is. So I kind of knew what I was looking for. But I also wanted, if possible, to get something that I could use in its entirety so as to eliminate having to buy two hoses. Now, this customer already has this piece of hose. I'm not sure if this is supplied with the Factory 5 kit or whether he got this from Breeze as well, regardless. We've got that, so I don't need that portion. However, for future builds and for all of you, I thought, well, it sure would be nice if we could find one hose that uh, had the 90 degree bend in it that we needed to get up to the thermostat housing, and then also had that offset that changed elevation down to the radiator. And I've got two examples over here that I think will work, either one of them. And, um, what I really wanted is I wanted something from, from a car that I knew would probably be something that people were going to hold on to in the future. So if you can find like something from a F-Series pickup or a C-10 pickup 
or a Camaro or Firebird or Mustang, something like that, that has all the bends in it that you can kind of cut in different sections in order to make work, that's kind of what you want because you know that those molded hoses are going to stay in production far longer than, say, an 86 Oldsmobile Sierra. So take that into consideration when you're trying to cobble one of these, these, these hoses together. Now, I even went as far as to think in some of the Coyote builds where we would use a piece of inch and a half stainless tubing like I have here. So this is, I think this is like 16th wall and it's, uh, you know, stainless tubing. Now, I could bend this if I wanted to, but the problem is it's thin wall and thin wall likes to um, crease when you bend it. And uh, I don't have a mandrel bender here at the shop. I have just a, a standard hydraulic bender. And it's probably going to do a number on this if I try to bend it. So I, I kind of talked myself out of this. Now I could use the straight portion of it. And I could put, you know, beads on the end of it so the hoses wouldn't come off. But there, again, I'm introducing more por points of failure. Because now I'm going to have to have a coupling at the end where it goes into the filler neck. And I'm going to have to have... A, a coupling over on the end where it goes into the radiator. So even if I use a longer piece where that offset is on one side, I'm still stuck with using a short piece of hose on the other side to make a coupling. And so I'm adding two points of failure that I don't want. So I'm going to try to do this all in one piece up to the, the, uh, the filler cap and then from the filler cap one piece down to the radiator. And I think between the two hoses I have over there that are full length, one of them is going to work, if not both. So I think this one's the winner. This is a Gates hose 21211. Now this hose is from a 79 through 84 G body Chevrolet. Now there are some other ones that uh, cross reference to it, but basically the G body is going to be the uh, El Camino, the Malibu, and then there, there's a collection of others. But um, it's a pretty common hose for a General Motors vehicle. I mean, it even goes over into like the Cadillac Seville of those years and some others. So I'm hoping chances are that that hose is something they're gonna keep in production for a while. And that's what we want. We wanna be able to find something that uh, the next time we go to replace the hose is still available because for instance, the one that I used for the bottom hose of Slytherin went out of production. It's a Goodyear hose that uh, Continental, which is Continental Goodyear, no longer makes. And so the next time I go to replace the bottom hose on Slytherin, I'm gonna have to go and do the same type of search in order to find a bottom radiator hose that's gonna work. So that's the one we're gonna use. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it probably right here. And so this section here, this side here will be against the radiator. So this will go into the radiator right here. We'll get our bend up and out, and then we're going to cut it about here. We'll be able to use this section from here, from here to here, as a 90 degree for our thermostat housing. So we, we may not replace the one that's on the car now because there's nothing wrong with it. It's brand new. But if you wanted to get the entire hose out of one hose, I believe this is the one we're going to want. All right, so nobody thinks I'm pulling a fast one on them. Here is the hose, 21211. This is the section we're going to use for the front section of the hose. This is garbage now, but we'll hold on to it. Might use that for something in the future. And this is the section that's going to go from the thermostat housing up. Now, I may trim this a little bit because, in my opinion, it sits awfully high. So I may trim, you know, two inches off of this to make it fit better. But let me put this over on the car and then I'll bring you right back. We'll take a look at it. Actually, I don't think it looks too bad. Um, I could probably trim this, this down a little bit. What I did do is I turned the hose around. So this is the cut end. No, this is the factory end. This is the cut end down there. And I, I just swapped them. And, uh, it brought the hose down a little bit. It did make it a little longer over here, so I've got a little bit of excess here I could trim. But uh, there you go. So one hose for the entire upper radiator hose kind of solution. Now this should work on any small block Ford. Doesn't matter if it's a 302 based engine 
or whether it's a 351 based engine, basically the water neck is, is just a little bit higher because it's got a taller deck height for the 351, but there's enough play in the hose that uh, it shouldn't make a difference. So I think, I think we found our solution here. Now I will say, on Slytherin, I have an AFCO radiator supplied by Factory 5. The upper inlet on that is only an inch and a quarter, where their new radiator that they're getting offshore is an inch and a half. You used to be able to use, and I still can, use a stock 93 Ford Mustang 5.0 upper radiator hose, and I do the same thing. I cut it into pieces, and it fits that entire length. It does put the radiator fill cap um, farther down towards the radiator, but I've never found it an issue when I'm filling it. Um, that car's always been able to burp the air out of the system really easy, so I, I, I don't know, um, you know if it's just um, the circumstances that our other guys are having, you know, maybe due to altitude and some other stuff. I, I don't know, but I've always had a really good time being able to get all the air out of the system in that car. Um, I've had trouble with some others, so. I, I don't know whether it's just the nature of the car or what. So all I've got left to do here for that upper hose to be done is put some um, hose clamps on it. And we're going to do our same trick. We're going to try to hide the, um, the tightening end of the, 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 they're called Breeze clamps because a company called Breeze um, was like the biggest manufacturer of those, uh, what, what do you call them, uh, spiral, spiral clamps. Regardless, all we have left to do is put the, clamps, the hose clamps on those, and this is done. Now I did change, or I'm going to change one more thing. The factory's five supplied radiator cap is a 16 pound cap. And I have found with aluminum heads and head bolts that you can save yourself a head gasket failure by reducing the pressure of the cap. So for instance on Slytherin, I run a 10 pound cap. If your cooling system is operating properly, you've got an 180 degree or even 192 degree thermostat in it and the fan is working properly, it'll never overheat. The radiator on this car is so oversized for a small block, it's really not even funny. But, um, so we're gonna change that cap out to a 10 and then I'll give the 16 pound cap to the owner when he picks the car up and, and he'll have it. But um, I've run a 10 pound cap on Slytherin since I built it and uh, uh, knock on wood, I've never had a leak. So it'll save you all kinds of headache down the line. We're not trying to bump up the boiling temperature of the coolant um, by overcompensating with a 16 pound cap. You know, back in the day in the 60s when these cars were built, um, you know, the small block Ford was around, it ran a 10 or 12 pound cap, that was it. You didn't run a 15, 16 pound cap back then. And uh, with a recovery system working the way it's supposed to be, it should, it should be just fine. So that's what we're gonna put in here. Um, I generally do that on all the small block cars that I build, um, but I've never kind of pointed it out in a video before, so now you guys know. So I think that's where we're going to leave this one. Um, what, a, what, a cool little, what a cool little trick, huh? Just, you know, and I think the, the, the cost of the, uh, I'm going to look at the cost right now. All right, I just checked on the cost of that, that hose. Now, this doesn't include shipping, but it was $14.78. So, you know, you can look at all your, your high-priced solutions to the upper hose issue. This is going to be far more reliable than that garbage that you get with the Factory 5 kit. The, um, and we've taken four points of failure away from that. So think about this. At, at this point, not including the cap or the overflow, we have four points of failure. So we have a point of failure here, 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 and at the radiator. If you look at the corrugated hose from Factory 5, because you're not only trying to seal to the outside of this corrugated tube, and then you're having to put a reducer in here, you've got one, two, three points of failure on each end. So you've got six just in this hose, plus the two there for the 90. So we've reduced the points of failure in half. And... Uh, I think it looks better. I think that I think that corrugated hose is just like I said. I think it's garbage. But uh, your car, do what you want. This is the way to go. Um, I think this is exactly what the customer wanted. 
I will see you guys next time. If you're enjoying the content here, please do the like, the share, the subscribe, all that kind of stuff. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.